Welcome to MoCo Plays Satisfactory. This is the start of a brand new Let's Play series on update 7 of Satisfactory, which has just gone live on the experimental branch. We're going to be taking a completely fresh save file, running through the intro, the early game, and beyond. And hopefully it'll feel like a really accessible and beginner-friendly look at this amazing game. As we go, I'll be doing as much as I can do to explain the core concepts, the ways of thinking, and the decisions that we're going to run into while we flesh out our most basic factory into something much more complex. Update 7 adds some interesting stuff. The biggest one to call out is probably the addition of blueprints within the game. And I'm hoping that's going to help us to make more complex and more interesting designs without some of the tedium that comes from placing every part by hand, as has previously been the case. In previous worlds and previous saves in Satisfactory, um, I've had a bit of a tendency to rush up the tech tree as quickly as possible to make things that are very functional but aren't necessarily the most visually interesting. Like this world that we're looking at right now, which I've got about 120 hours in. There's some really complex stuff here, but a lot of it's relying on the same patterns and the same kind of design mentality. And I'm hoping that a fresh save file with some of the extra tools that are in the box now will kind of help to, to inspire creativity, I guess. Um, and so that's definitely going to be a focus for me as we go through this playthrough to make things that are interesting, scalable, and aren't necessarily the lowest hanging fruit when it comes to design and thinking about the way that the world and the factories that we build in it are going to be shaped. This is going to be a mod-free, or at least a very mod light playthrough. I might make some concessions to some quality of life stuff. I'm thinking specifically about like inventory size, just anything that sort of removes the time tax of having to run back and forward to a main storage when we want to do larger and more complex builds like this. But certainly, and especially at least for the, uh, the first few episodes here, given the updates just dropped onto experimental and has basically broken much of the mod support, we're going to be doing a vanilla playthrough. So yeah, my, my ethos really here is going to be to not be tempted so much to rush to the newest, shiniest thing. To instead be a little bit more focused on finishing designs, to not leave so many half-thought-through ideas abandoned in the world. And to also just play with more tools in the box. You know, there's a lot of really interesting stuff, be it ways of transporting goods from one factory to another, or ways of networking things together. And I really do want to experiment more with that, as well as with more of the visual tools that we can unlock to make the visual design of things as interesting as the functional side of things. In terms of my goals then, there will be a certain amount of rushing, definitely from a new save file, I'm going to want to get us towards a certain tech tier as soon as possible. And there's really two reasons for that. One of which is to get us to tier 3 for coal power, because in the early game, when you're relying on biofuel and collecting leaves and things by hand, that's just kind of more tedium than we really want. And the other is to get us on tier 4, where the new blueprint designer exists, because that is the shiny new feature for update 7. And really, I don't have much experience at all with that, so we're going to be learning and playing and experimenting together there. Other goals, as I've kind of alluded to, I really do want to design with aesthetics in mind to use as many of the tools as we can do to do interesting things. And of course, this being fix it and this being satisfactory, to be as efficient as possible. So yeah, I think that's uh, about it as far as intro goes. Let me jump out of this world here and jump into a fresh save file and we'll pick it up there. Okay, so we are gonna start a new game here. Now, Satisfactory gives us these four options here and it kind of highlights the first two as being kind of beginner friendly. Really, the, the latter two options aren't much harsher um, and we're actually going to be starting here in the Northern Forest because there's an extremely good starting location with a bunch of pure nodes that we're going to be able to take advantage of really quickly. So even if you were a new player, there's there's no harm at all in starting here. The, the things that it says you need to be wary of really aren't that big a factor. We're going to call this YouTube Factory. And we're going to get going. So the game's going to run us through this kind of little uh, intro cutscene here. I'm mostly going to be quiet while, uh, while it does so that we can experience this. A 
Attention Pioneer. The following instructional video is a summary of your impending duties as an exoplanetary pioneer for Fixit Incorporated. Fixit Pioneers have three cyclical assigned pillars of work to ultimately accomplish project assembly. Use provided blueprints to build the necessary buildings. Chart the planet and gather resources to provide desired results and improve your infrastructure. Make sure to report any unusual discoveries to R&D for analysis. Expand your factories, outposts and pipelines through automation and augmentation. That's it. Get to work and be effective. Warning, planet fall imminent. Please remain seated during full procedure. Atmospheric entry in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Planet fall procedure initialized. ensure the integrity of your multi-purpose exploration suit is at 100%. Remember, efficiency first. Godspeed. Uh, something's, something's gone on with your thumb, the guy. Alright, cool. Here we are. Welcome to Planet Massage 2 ABB, your designated sector in the binary star system of Akicha. I am Ada, also known as Artificial Directory and Assistant, tasked to support pioneers, such as you, in their mission. You are the third of your sector to survive Planetfall. Congratulations. Note. Objective-based introduction initialized. Welcome to Onboarding. First objective, please dismantle the drop pod. Yep, okay, so here we go with some basics. Done. So, after dismantle, let's get rid of that. Note, fix it incorporated as Yeah, I'm also efficient. All important fix it data. <clears throat> yep, cool, okay. This is the codex. We're going to be in here not very often, but when we need to check details of. Um, how to build what and recipes and so on and so forth. Second objective. Please ensure you have your Fixit Incorporated Xeno Zapper equipped before leaving the drop zone. Yes. I no. will do that. According to. Yeah, so uh, that was tab to go into the inventory and then we can either drag and drop into the slot or we could just double click to do this. <clears throat> Third objective. Please note. Yep, yep. Okay. Uh, so, I'm also then going to hide this thing away because I don't plan on using it very much. So down in the bottom right you can see we've got these, um, the, you know, the, the UI controls and stuff like that, so I can press H to free up my hands. The reason why I don't plan on using that is I'm now going to go into the advanced game settings. And this is new for, for update 7, we can go into creatures and we can set them to passive. So there's still going to be creatures in the world, but they're not going to bother us now. The combat in this game is like it's it's fine it's just you know um once you do so much of it you it really kind of loses its novelty and they're, they're just things that get in the way so i'm pretty happy that they've added passive mode to this game um without the need for any mods for doing that uh right okay we are going to scan for iron here hey there's a giant flying matter ray thing up there which is nice gonna be friends with him so the start that we're looking for here um, is a specific location um, uh, and there's like two pure iron nodes right next to each other, pure copper node right there and a, a limestone node that's right next to it as well so it's really ideal for early game. 
Um, based on those pings, um, I think it's in this direction. Let's try it. Uh, okay, so one thing that I'm going to be doing while we're moving towards there is we're going to be picking up leaves. So you can press, but also you can hold down E, and then so long as you're next to leaves, it will keep picking those up. And it's going to be super important for us to have tons of those, because those are going to form our fuel in the early game. Uh, don't worry too much about that spooky voice that's talking to us there. It's uh, a resource that... Uh, doesn't really do very much right now. It doesn't do anything just yet, I don't think. So lots of leaves and petals and things that we're going to be using to fuel the um, first stage of our game before we tech up to uh, start to use some some more sustainable, um, like long-term sustainable and self-sufficient fuel sources. But in the early game, you're going to need tons and tons of leaves and petals and wood and that sort of thing so it's actually no bad thing that it's dropped us uh, a little bit further away from our starting location here it's going to give us a chance to get some of this stuff as we go towards our starting location yep yeah, this is the place i'm pretty sure So it's over, if you start in the northern forest, it's over kind of northwest of uh, of anywhere that it can start. The, the game can kind of drop you within some random space in an area. But basically you head down towards the valley, follow this path down, and you land in this lovely place, which is going to be our new home. Uh, so, why is this so cool? Well, right over here. Ignore that message about hostility, by the way. These, these enemies are going to spawn and then they're going to realize they're passive. So they're just going to go about being happy little bees. Which is nice. Uh, yeah, so why is this place so good? We have this pure iron node right here. We have this pure iron node right here. Over this way, we have this third pure iron node. And then down over here, that's a pure copper node. And just up here is a limestone node, which I think is a normal node. So with those things combined, that's everything we're going to need for the first few stages, and certainly for, for much of the early game. In fact, with this much pure iron, we're going to be good for a really good chunk of the game on that front. Okay, so we're going to need to start to pick up some of this iron. When you find these nodes, they've often got this like kind of chunk in the middle here. Um, if we're going to automate any mining on here, which we definitely are going to do, then you want to tap away at this chunk in the middle and this will... Um, disappear in a second or two. Build the hub. Note, to complete this objective, the resources salvaged from the drop pod will be consumed. Caution, ensure the hub is built on spacious open terrain close to the presence of iron sources. Failure to do so will likely result in non-optimal progress. Okay, cool. We want spacious open terrain, we do, however, this is where our iron is and our copper is like over here, so we're actually going to be using a good chunk of this area for building uh, production lines. So what I'm going to do is back the hub a ways a little bit, just right here. Um, so coming into the build menu here, it's going to give me the, uh, the outline and I can scroll the mouse wheel around to rotate and stuff. Um, which way is which? I'm looking for the what will eventually be the power, which I think is this side. Let's drop that in there. So we're going to need to come back and forward into the hub a fair bit in the early game, but gradually we'll be spending less and less time here. You have unlocked hub feature, manual craft bench, hub feature, hub terminal. Fifth objective, complete hub upgrade one. Note. The craft bench and hub terminal are essential for progression to the next objective. Uh, yeah, okay, so we've also got this down here. This early game thing is going to be like temporary. We're going to get things up and running to get us through the first few hours and the first few stages of the game. And then we're definitely going to be rebuilding and refactoring all of this stuff uh, so that we're not building directly on the ground once we get to the point where we've got some foundations and stuff. Right now though, I'm just going to come in here, tell it that I want to upgrade tier 1. 
and do that and it needs me to make some stuff it wants me to make 10 iron rods so with the iron ore that i picked up from hammering away at those iron nodes i'm going to come to the craft bench i'm going to come in here and i can either click to craft or i can just press spacebar and once you press spacebar it'll just keep crafting um the resource that you've got selected automatically so i'm turning these iron ore into iron ingots that we can then use to build out materials I only need to make 10 iron rods right now for this upgrade, but we're going to need some more of these right now, so I'm just going to let that take through for a minute. Alright, that's all of our iron ore used up, so we can use it to craft into these iron plates and iron rods. The game's telling us we need some rods right now, so I'm just going to manually craft some of those as well. There we go. Okay, so we need 10 of those. Either drag and drop, or you can... Oh, I can't take them back out there. Or you can double click the resources up here and it'll add them back in. And you can see that our hub's upgraded to the next stage. We've got some extra stuff here, like this personal storage, which is nice. Congratulations. You have Thank unlocked you. Building, workshop, equipment, portable miner, inventory, additional slots. Hub feature, personal storage. All right, let's drop some stuff that we don't need in here. Upgrade two. Note, portable miners require no power and will mine a node. Yep, portable miners are a thing. Uh, right, okay. So this here is our personal inventory. This is the storage container we're looking at. We can drag and drop stuff in here like this. Uh, you can see it's also telling us the other controls we can do here. Like we can right click on a stack to split it. Equally, you can drag stuff back in to recombine them. Hold right click to split like that. Um, you can also shift click an item. Okay. Double click? Yeah, you can double click an item or shift click an item to move an entire stack like that. If you control click the item, it moves all items of that stack. So hold control and click there, I'll get all my leaves back. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to store those flower petals because they're not very much use to me right now. And keep everything else. Uh, right, it's telling us we can build our equipment workshop, so let's just drop that down right here. Oh no, I need some iron plates. Okay. Alright. Let's just drop that right there, and then that's going to let us build some portable miners. So these are things that only really get used in the very early game. Um, they're like decent early stage things because they don't require any power, but we're very quickly going to tech up to the point where we have standard miners that are going to get hooked up to a power grid and they're going to like just produce the resources indefinitely. These portable miners are pretty handy for right now um, because... As I say, they're, they're very cheap and don't require any power or other infrastructure. But they will get full. They will eat until they can eat no more. Uh, and then they'll stop, which is not ideal, so we're going to want to bypass them as soon as we can. We're going to keep running up to here. This is our copper node, which we don't need right this minute, but we're going to need some copper pretty soon. I'm going to pause for a minute because there's a tiny cat who's screaming to get my attention. So, bear with me. We'll be back once these miners are full and this cat has been uh, sorted out. Alright, so these miners have been doing some mining. So I'm just going to grab everything that's in here and let them crack on with that little task. This kind of um, slide run jumping thing that I'm doing is... Uh, it's generally the fastest way to get around, at least in the early game. Ooh, oh, I got really confused about where my miners were there. So let's grab that, grab that, grab that, grab that. 
So we've got a lot more ore with which to do things right now. That's pretty funny. Uh, right, what do we actually need to do next? We need to go to upgrade 2, which is going to cost us some rods and some plates. So that's cool. If I select that milestone, which I should have done just now, um, then it lets me put the resources and it also kind of adds it in the top right there as my reminder for the stuff that I need. So, I need some more ingots, so let's craft those. And this gets pretty tedious watching these numbers go up, so we're going to automate this stuff really as soon as we can do, which should be within the next tier or two, I think. What do we need? 20 rods and 10 plates, so it should be good at that. Oh, but I actually need to craft them first, of course. And I got my numbers the wrong way around. It's alright, because we're going to use all those resources in the relatively near future anyway, and then many, many more on top of that. Okay, that's enough to make 20 rods. Let's go. Yeah, just control click in to drop all of those in there. Now. Got some new stuff. Congratulations. You have unlocked hub feature, biomass burner, scanner feature, copper, new buildings and recipes, which can be found in the build menu and craft bench, respectively. Seventh objective. Complete hub upgrade three. Note. Connect advice. Automate this. Yeah, I definitely should automate smelting. Okay, so we have biomass burner here, which I can just add some wood or leaves or even those petals that we got into that's not going to um, actually generate any power or use any of this fuel until we've hooked up a machine to it so let's build this new smelter which we can i need to craft some wire first the wire comes from the copper ore that we selected you'll see we've got new options here with copper ingots wire and cables Let's just make some of that. And the smelter is going to automate the job of turning our ore into ingots so that we don't have to do that by hand anymore, which will be very nice. Nope, need more rods. This is the early game thing. I'm just going to craft a few of everything so that we don't keep running into that. Let me just pause a minute. Alright, spent a few minutes crafting some more ingots from the ore and then turning those into iron rods and plates, so we should be good for the time being. So, let's build our smelter here. You can see it's got an arrow for an input and an output there. That'll be important later on when we're automating. For now though, we just need to plop it down somewhere. And then we need to add power, which I think requires cable, which we don't have. So. Cables are crafted out of wire, so we can take some of the wire that we already made and turn that into cables. Oh, that's me actually crafting more wire. Can turn that into cables. Here we go. <clears throat> and we can use that to carry power. So right now we're just doing things one to one, but this is going to get more complicated pretty quickly. So you can see that's now fired itself up and it's starting to consume the biomass because we're consuming the power that this machine needs. This machine also needs a recipe to be set and then it needs the resource to be input. So if we take the iron ingot here and add in that iron ore, it's going to automatically turn that into iron ingots for us, which is going to be fantastic. No, I don't think at this stage I can do any more than that. Pretty soon I'm going to be able to use power poles, which will let me distribute my power in a one-to-many kind of fashion. I don't think we have that yet. Uh, so, while 
those iron ingots are ingot ing. We should have a look at what we need to unlock next. Upgrade 3 will give us those power poles and also automation of construction and concrete. So let's select that. We've got nearly everything we need to do that already. Just need to make some more wires. Just uh, giving myself the ability to make a few extra here because I'm going to need them in a sec anyway. Go. Alright, let's get those dropped in. Get that upgrade. Congratulations. You have unlocked scanner feature limestone. New buildings and recipes which can be found in the build menu and craft bench respectively. So there's our concrete recipe that uses the limestone. Eighth objective. Complete hub upgrade four. Note. Use power poles to expand the power network for optimal results. Here we go, so we've got constructors, we can do multiple smelters now because we can extend the power network. So, we are going to get cooking pretty soon here. Let's dismantle that and move that away. One thing that's good about Satisfactory is it doesn't waste resources, so me dismantling that smelter there now gives me back all the resources that it took to build it. And it also gives me back all the resources that were like currently in their processing, so I haven't lost anything by doing that just now. What I am going to do is set up a couple of smelters here. I'm not because we don't have any iron rods. Let's craft some more of those quickly. So we're going to set up a couple of smelters to create these basic parts. I'm thinking if we set up two uh, smelters for iron and one for copper, that'll let us get our ingot flow into there pretty quickly. Um, and then once we get uh, conveyor belts pretty soon, we can have those flowing into constructors to make things like iron plates and iron rods. All right. Uh, so you'll notice down on my hotbar, it's given me the power pole on slot one and the um, power cable, power line on slot two. I don't actually need to worry about manually placing the poles. If I go from a power connection, and then I hover over ground, it's going to try and place the power pole for me, which is good because it means we don't have to worry too much about micromanaging that stuff. It does mean that we need to get some concrete. Oh, so let's grab that stuff. Grab this iron while we are on our way here. So there's a limestone node just up here. There will be other ones of them around the world if we do a scan. But this is our closest. Some more over there, some more over there that we'll be using in due course. Um, so one thing to note here, oh, this is a pure limestone node, that's nice. Um, they, these little chunks in the middle, these always show pure. Uh, but the nodes themselves vary in quality. You've got pure, you've got normal, and you've got impure, I think. Um, Pure obviously being the best, it means that when we add manual miners, um, automated miners down on those pretty soon, we're going to get more like per per minute generated um, from there. This is why the starting location is so good, is because there's so many pure nodes that are close to each other, especially for those early game resources. Obviously, we're missing some other stuff that uh, that other no other starting locations have nearer to them like quartz and catarium and coal and stuff like that that's less of a concern really for me because like by the time we get to needing that stuff we're going to have solved some of the problems about transporting uh, resources across distances and stuff so for the early game it's great to just have these few resources that are like super close to each other oh please don't let me die there we go that was close Okay, so now that we've got the limestone, we can go straight to concrete. There's no 
smelting required for limestone, you just build it straight into the concrete that we use to build things like foundations and also power poles. We're going to be using a lot of this stuff. Tons and tons of it. stuff for there. In fact, I should select that milestone so that it tells us in our top right what we want to be working towards. So, as I was saying, if I just press 2 on my hotbar here, it's going to try and connect the power line. If I go straight to a building, it's going to connect direct, but if I hover over the ground, it's going to want to build a power pole. Power poles let you split your one power source into many outputs. So you can see I've got one of four connected here, which means that I could connect up all of these three machines. What I'm going to do is actually just place another power pole here. So then I've still got some slots free to expand further if I want to. Get those connected. And we have tripled our productivity. All I have to press is Y. Uh, right, so those want some ore feeding into them. Want recipes set as well, which I have done. Okay, the next thing that we can do is build some constructors. Let's drop them down. Need reinforced iron plates. Surely, in this economy? Alright, let's. What do we need for those? Screws, which means more rods, which means more. Let's uh, handcraft some ingots while we're waiting. Smelters are going to do this, but they're going to take some time to process that stuff, so let's do a bit of manual legwork while we're waiting on that stuff. Okay, so we can make more plates and more rods, and the rods that we've made, or continue to make, we can make screws. So what do we actually need? We need two reinforced iron plates per constructor. Let's say we were building three constructors, then need six of these. Twelve screws each. Uh, okay, cool. So if we just build a bunch of screws, then we're probably going to be going to be good. What do we need? Like twelve, twenty-four. 48. 72 screws to build three constructors, I think. Uh, we also need to build the plates. Ah, that will in fact tell us. So as I'm creating the screws here, you can see that this stuff will tick up if we've got the right resources. It does it based on what you've got least of, so in this case it's saying, hey, I need six plates per reinforced iron plate. I, had, I don't have that many. I'm going to build more of those. You'll see it's now telling me I can make four reinforced iron plates. And we can now make six, which is what we want. Okay, cool. These will have created a bunch of stuff and also started to run out of resources, so I'm going to need to be uh, re re-upping these every so often. We're not far away from being able to automate that process with some um, some miners and some conveyor belts though. In the meantime, let's get our constructors set up. Oh god, I'm always missing something. Right, let's set you to producing wire. Let's me go and make some cables. By which I mean let's make some copper ingots. And then make some wire. And then make some cables. So 
for there, and I was making more constructors. Let's have one there, and one there. Hmm. And you can make our iron rods, and you can make our iron plates. Need more cables, of course I do. Do have this wire right here. Okay, well, let me do the thing. You are. Alright, you have a recipe, but you need resource. You have a recipe, but you need resource. And I have blown my power grid by overloading it. Um. <laughs> okay, well, let's just turn something off now. Let's turn one of these off. See if it lets us get away with that. Nope. Okay. Uh, what do we have most of? Not really anything right now. Let's just turn off the uh, light constructor. This is only going to be a temporary problem. Turned off. You are on. You are on. You're making wire. Making rods. What do we really need? We need plates. So, in fact, I should turn you off and have you on because we need plates in volume for the next tier. As well as concrete, which we've got cables which we can have as soon as we turn this wire into cables. Uh, right, what was the other thing? Concrete we have. Plates that constructor is going to give us some of. Let's just crack on with some rods in the meantime. for us. You got some wire for us. Oh, we could just make some more plates by hand. Got 46 plates, we need 75, so that's we need 29. So, kind of one thing to talk about here is that these you know, the, the requirements for the hub upgrades are going. Up, right, it wants more complex resources. It wants cable, which is a three step production chain at the moment, uh, and it wants 75 of these plates as well. It's the game really incentivizing us to like automate some amount of this production, which we've somewhat done, even if we're still manually handcrafting some stuff for speed. We could have automated that entirely, it's just, you know, it would take longer because we can only do so much right now until we get the ability to have more power. Congratulations, you have unlocked. Building, conveyor belts and poles. Inventory, additional slots. Ninth objective, complete hub upgrade 5. Note, portable miners cannot be connected to conveyor belts. Advice, when planning the construction of buildings, note the placement of conveyor belts. 
Okay, so we're still on one biomass burner, but we have melts right now. Get to upgrade five, which will give us automated miners, storage, and more inventory slots. And then we have most of what we need already, really. In fact, let's add those in while we've got it. We're just going to need more cables. So, that means getting more copper resource for that to turn into wire. Let's go grab that. still be smelting away. You can still be plating away over here. Very nice, we have exactly enough to make the 50 cables we need. extra things while I'm in here as well. Alright, let's feed those in. E, there's that extra burner. We have unlocked. Building miner mark one. Building storage container. Hub feature, additional biomass burner. Tenth objective, complete hub upgrade six. Note, there are no notes. All right, cool. So things are getting a lot more feasible for us to be able to scale things up and automate. Now we've got this extra stuff like an automated miner. Got these conveyor belts that will let us connect miners to smelters and smelters to constructors. We've got more power overhead with the second biomass burner. So what happened before with the power going out was essentially this produces a maximum of uh, 20. It has a capacity of 20 megawatts, uh, and I was I had connected machines that drew more than that. But with two of these, my capacity has gone up to 40 megawatts. So if we hook both of these into a power grid. We could turn all of these machines back on and then some. So that's what we're going to do. But we are going to do that next episode. So let's call it there for now. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching. And I will catch you very soon for some more Satisfactory.